After the Goodwill event in Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1, I think it's safe to say Yuji and Toto became one of anime's favorite duos. Toto's charisma and delusional nature combined with his love for fighting, overall strength and curse technique provided us with the perfect compliment for Yuji that hasn't really been replicated since. With the return of this duo coming back in Shibuya to face off against Mahito, I thought it appropriate to once again throw Toji into the mix to see how these two sorcerers would do against the one who is free from cursed energy. Before we get started, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as I'd really appreciate it. There aren't some crazy curse techniques to cover in this video because for the most part, everyone here is a strictly physical fighter. Aside from Toto, who due to the recent anime episode, there has been some controversy surrounding his curse technique. In this scene, it seems like Toto switches places without clapping his hands, leading people to believe that's a part of his curse technique, but that's simply not true. I'd say that Toto probably just clapped his hands too fast for us to see in order to switch places or the anime simply fumbled with this scene. A lot of people have brought this page to the conversation where Toto says clapping doesn't necessarily mean he'll activate his curse technique, which is true, but people are using it for the wrong reasons. Toto is saying that just because he clapped doesn't mean he'll switch places with something, not that he can do so without clapping. The scene supports this where he claps his hands and him and Yuji don't switch this time. This is why context is important when talking about a specific page. Toto's curse technique just allows him to switch himself with something else that has cursed energy or two other things that have cursed energy. For example, Toto can switch both Playful Cloud and Yuji's places, or he can switch his place and Yuji's place. So long as the thing has cursed energy, Toto's curse technique will work on it. I don't think I need to explain following from this then that his curse technique simply will not work if he's trying to switch places with Toji. Toji has no cursed energy for Toto to activate his curse technique with, but that doesn't make the technique completely useless because he can obviously still use the technique on Yuji for combo attacks. But I think a more interesting discussion spawns when you talk about how Toto could put Toji at a disadvantage using his curse technique. Toji does use curse tools which obviously have cursed energy. But beyond that, Toji fights with a curse where he stores all of his cursed tools at. Saying Toto would disarm Toji might not be too in character or might not even be possible, but I think saying Toto could use Boogie Woogie to try and remove the inventory curse from Toji is a likely plan Toto would come up with, especially after seeing Toji take a curse tool out of it. There's nothing to alert Toto to the dangers of Heavenly Inverted Spear or the Soul Split Katana, so he has no reason to try and take those from Toji if he pulls them out. But if Toji gets to blabbing his mouth similar to how he did against Ghetto when they fought in hidden inventory, Toto trying to take the inventory curse from him becomes increasingly more likely. The problem is, well, how long can Toto play keep away while also having to fight Toji himself along with Yuji? For that, we'll have to start covering their physical stats and see how these two stack up to someone like Toji. I guess I should have mentioned this in the intro, but we're obviously going to be talking about Toto as of his last appearance which was in Shibuya and Yuji from the same time but at 100% since a lot of people missed this but Yuji being at 120% of his potential comes after the statement of Mahito saying Yuji's soul is at 10% HP. This shouldn't inherently mean Yuji is at 10% of his overall power but Mahito makes a comparison to himself saying he's only at 40% because of all the damage he's taken and it's taken a lot out of him. So even though Yuji is at 120% of his potential, that's not referring to him being at 120% of his power. This is likely talking about the amp Black Flash provides you. The only one who should be actually at 120% is Toto since he's fresh onto the battlefield. I don't want to claim Yuji is at a specific percentage, it's just some vague amount of less than 100%. If you want even more evidence, it's stated emotions come from the soul and obviously cursed energy is born from negative emotions. For Toji, just imagine Toji in his prime with his curse tools and whatnot. One advantage Toji has in this fight as compared to the other people I put him up against like Mahito or Jogo or even his fight with Dagon is that Yuji and Toto don't require Toji to use curse tools on them in order for them to be damaged because I mean, they're just humans. This means even without his inventory curse, Toji is very much still a threat to these two on top of another factor. Toji has a level of precognition similar to what sorcerers have. It's stated by Toto that when throwing a punch, lower level sorcerers differ from elites in that you can tell they are about to throw a right punch because the flow of their cursed energy gives it away. 
Beyond that, there is a spark when it comes to cursed energy and activating a technique that sorcerers can pick up on. Toji has a different type of precog where the environment around him tells him how the opponent is going to move. This is revealed to us in the fight with Maki and Naoya. This won't inherently let him see through Toto's curse technique because even if he predicts a clap like I already went over, that doesn't necessarily mean Toto is about to switch places with Yuji or any other object. This does however give Toji the advantage of trying to stop Toto from clapping his hands, but there would have to be a pretty big speed gap for something like that to happen, since a simple clap is a lot easier of a move to make than running to an opponent to stop them from doing the clap. Toji's inverted spear of heaven could prove to be useful in this fight since by jamming it into Toto, he could stop Toto from switching places, but just being real, I think if Toji gets up on Toto and uses the inverted spear of heaven, it's going to end up like a teen Gojo situation and he's not just going to back off after he jams the spear into him. Toji also does have access to Playful Cloud, the tool was in his inventory curse, he just didn't use it during hidden inventory. That's not a curse tool he'll have to use, but it's just something he has with him. To talk about Yuji since I haven't really yet in the video, the main thing I'm thinking about him is if he'll be able to land a black flash and what that means for the fight if he does end up landing it. I'm inclined to say if I'm imagining Gege writing this fight that Yuji would probably hit at least one black flash. It seems consistent that Toto inspires Yuji a lot and puts him in the right state of mind to focus enough and actually land one even though it's pretty much just up to chance if it actually lands. The main problem Yuji is going to have is actually landing a punch on Toji because Toji is insanely fast along with the precognition I mentioned earlier. We actually have pretty good speed comparisons for Toji and Yuji all throughout the manga. At the beginning of Shibuya, when Megami is fighting alongside Yuji against Awasaka, he mentions that Awasaka really isn't the issue, but more so keeping up with Yuji is the problem. Later on in the arc, Megami is speed blitzed by Toji so bad, he starts to wonder when it was that he actually switched locations. Megami also mentions how Toji is almost impossible to track, and he has to perfectly time his counter if he wants to land a hit on him. This is after Megami uses the same type of mental amp that got him to open his domain expansion the first time, where he imagines himself stronger or imagines himself winning against his current opponent to push himself to new heights. Megami is admittedly low enough on cursed energy that he can't even cast his domain, but he mentions how that wouldn't really make a difference against Toji anyway, and that statement is pretty important. It is stated that within his domain, Megami can expand his curse technique's potential to around 120%. But beyond that, it's mentioned in the fan book that since Yuji had pulled ahead due to his black flashes, that Gege gave Megami a domain to help him catch up since black flash isn't a technique that suits Megami all that well. So Megami not thinking the domain would work against Toji is a pretty good statement for him. Megami also says that none of his Shikigami are strong enough to fight Toji, which could include Maharaga, but I won't take it that far and I don't need to. This line of thinking is also pretty consistent with other things that happen in the story as well. Yuji is stated to rival Nanami in pure striking strength by Eno. This statement has a couple of caveats to it, but even in its most generous interpretation, it works in the favor of the argument I'm about to make, which is that Yuji's punch rivals over time Nanami's ratio strike. My personal interpretation, what I think is the most consistent, is that Yuji rivals Nanami's normal striking power, since Eno does say he was comparing their straight striking power, which doesn't sound like it'd include a curse technique. So excluding Nanami's ratio, but regardless, like I said, it doesn't matter because Nanami's overtime ratio strike didn't do enough damage to harm Dagon, or if it did harm Dagon, it didn't take a chunk out of his arm or anything, and we all saw what Toji did to Dagon with Playful Cloud. So even with that generous interpretation of Yuji's strength, he doesn't strike as hard as Toji. There is an argument to say Yuji possibly grew stronger after this point, and it lies in something Gojo said in chapter 53, when everyone is discussing the curse's attack on Goodwill and what their plan is. Gojo wonders if they are scared of Yuji and his growing strength from Sukuna's fingers or if they are trying to increase their own strength. If Yuji grows in strength as the fingers do, then it stands to reason he is stronger in the Mahito fight than when he struck the barrier because he had ingested 11 fingers between those two points in time. The problem with this is we know the fingers don't result in Yuji getting exactly a finger's worth of power, because Yuji isn't as strong as 15 fingers Sukuna. 
With that being said, the exact amount stronger Yuji gets is unknown from each finger. For all we know, he could have only gotten 11% stronger. Saying he got 1% from each finger, we literally have no idea. Even still, Toji remains stronger than Yuji after Shibuya, so it doesn't really matter. This is going to be getting into manga spoilers, so if you don't want to hear that, skip to this timestamp. In chapter 139, Yuji gets completely outsped by Naoya, who isn't even trying since he says he was going to up his speed after blitzing Yuji and Choso. This same Naoya was outsped by Maki when he was moving at full speed and this was before Maki was equal to Toji. After her awakening and becoming equal to Toji, Maki was able to react to and outspeed Naoya who had gotten even faster than his previous top speed. And considering we're given numbers for it this time, we can actually quantify how much faster Maki or Toji would be than Yuji at this point. Like I said, Naoya wasn't trying on Yuji, so Maki's statement that Naoya was at the speed of sound before doesn't matter to Yuji scaling. Naoya is the speed of sound, which is Mach 1. After turning into an evolved cursed spirit, it stated his speed reached Mach 3. And then Maki completely outclasses this speed when becoming equal to Toji, so Toji would be over three times faster than Yuji, and even if you wanted to say Yuji could match Naoya, would still be three times faster. This only becomes more consistent with the release of chapter 215 and 222, where in chapter 215, Yuji is shown to be slower than Maki and consistently placed lower than her by Sukuna. Before Maki even speeds up, she's outperforming Yuji against Sukuna, and when she does speed up, Yuji falls behind while only being kept in the fight because of Maki. After her and Sukuna dash off, Yuji is the slower one, but Maki makes him useful again by swinging him around like a bat at Sukuna. When Sukuna is blocking their strikes on either side with one hand, if you pay attention, Yuji is also using his knees while Maki is only throwing punches at Sukuna. If this isn't enough to say Maki is clearly holding back on Sukuna, not once does she use the soul split katana on him, which is stated to directly attack the soul and ignore the durability of everything. A sword that Toji has in his possession by the way. Sukuna also compliments Maki a total of three times in this chapter alone, which is three more times than he has ever complimented Yuji's power in the entirety of the manga. He mentions how Nui didn't damage Maki at all, so she isn't easy to take down, while just prior to that claiming Yuji wouldn't be any trouble to him, even with his lowered output. He punches Maki with a clean shot to the face, which she tanks, and he says, nice, before they both run off, clashing multiple times on the rubble. I'll revisit that specifically in a second, but the last compliment comes from Urame hitting Maki with Frost Calm maximum output, where Sukuna says it was right for Urame to focus on Maki. About Sukuna and Maki fighting on the rubble, a lot of people are inclined to believe Yuji was a part of this, and I just don't think so. This part doesn't have to be true necessarily, but to me, the fact that there are two lines constantly clashing here as they bounce from rubble to rubble implies that there are only two people. You might say, well, Yuji is right here in the aftermath, and yeah, he's there, but he's also falling behind. It looks like he just caught up with where they went. This gets more consistent with chapter 222 when we're introduced to the heavy hitters of Jutsu High and it's Maki, Hikari, and Yuta with Yuji nowhere to be seen. He doesn't join this group or stand with these people until acquiring his newfound powers which have yet to be revealed on the cover of chapter 240. I think by now I've shown in a multitude of ways that Toji is far and away physically superior to both Yuji and Toto by a considerable amount. To be honest, even though I do think Toto would boogie woogie the inventory curse, I'm just not at all convinced it would mean anything in a fight against a guy who can not only fight without cursed tools this time, but is so much physically superior to the both of them they'd probably barely be able to keep up with his movements. I honestly don't see this fight lasting that long if just for two simple reasons. Toji is easily the strongest one present and Toto's curse technique won't be that much of a problem with Toji's precognition and his immunity to the technique. I also haven't really harped on this too much but Toto, even though he can keep up, is undeniably weaker than Yuji. 
I mean, like I already mentioned, Yuji wasn't at his best when him and Toto fought together in Shibuya. That's not to say Toto is absolutely nowhere in the realm of Yuji. We do know that Toto is a grade 1 sorcerer, which Yuji is compared to consistently at this time. He's compared to Nanami, like I said. He's compared to Kusakabe by Meimei. He outperforms Toto. And even after Shibuya, he's able to fight with Higuruma, who is stated to be at the level of a grade 1 sorcerer. And that's when Yuji isn't even using cursed energy. So Toto is definitely of the most use here because of his curse technique. And the best hope him and Yuji have of actually hitting and doing damage to Toji is getting lucky with Boogie Woogie and landing a black flash on Toji. Toji does have the durability to tank Sukuna's Dynamax Nue Lightning. So if you think Yuji's black flashes hits harder than that, then maybe it could actually harm Toji. Since Nuwei did absolutely no damage to Maki, who is equal to Toji. Yuji's Black Flash, admittedly, I have no way to say is comparable to Toji's durability or completely stronger than it, but regardless of if it would hurt, I doubt it would one-shot Toji, so in the end, I do think Toji would win.